Hey there, so this will be the third video, I believe, in the series on uh, mean reverting assets and the ornstein ullenbeck uh, process. So we have been going through uh, the book. So we've been going through the first chapter of the book, uh, Optimal Mean Reverting uh, Trading. And uh, the first video in the series was just what, what is a pairs trading? So this book deals largely with, with uh, the trading of pairs. And the second video was kind of all of the heavy lifting. It was the um, it was the mathematics behind uh, maximum likelihood uh, in the context of Ornstein Ullenbeck. So in this video, I want to implement uh, the process or the, the mathematics that they describe in code and try to reproduce the results that they give in their book. They look at the pair uh, GLD, which is the gold ETF, and GDX, which is a gold miners ETF. And these things are obviously highly correlated. And they also look at gold versus silver. So basically what we're going to do is find the optimal weighting of number of shares of, uh, we'll, we'll say GDL and uh, GLD and GDX for now. So the optimal ratio of shares of GLD to GDX that kind of maximizes this mean reverting process. And I should say up front, I don't get exactly the same numbers they do. They're pretty close, but uh, I haven't figured out quite why we disagree. It could be uh, a small difference in implementation. It could be the fact that their date ranges are a little bit weird. They uh, they give they they don't specify the exact dates they're using uh, for historical data. So we could just be uh, choosing slightly different dates within the same time window, which they do do define. So um, yeah, it's, this is, this will be pretty simple. Let's just get into it and, and code this up. Okay, so as I mentioned in the intro, we are discussing this book here, um, Optimal Mean Reversion Trading and Mathematical Analysis by these fellows here. And again, we're, since we're building on a lot of previous stuff, I'm going to link uh, these directly here in the workbook, which will be on, uh, on GitHub. And if I remember, I will put them in the video description below. And we don't need anything fancy for this. This is just an implementation of the code or the, the method that these guys uh, suggest. So all we need is NumPy just to manip manipulate arrays, pandas to bring in our data. And I don't probably even need matplotlib, but I'll bring it in uh, just in case. So just as a bit of a review, uh, we're talking about something that kind of obeys this statistical uh, relation here. So the change in our variable x is basically, uh, it can be thought of as a random walk uh, with a mean reverting term. So the farther this gets from the equilibrium point, the average point, the more, the greater the, yeah, the statistical chance of it being pulled back to, uh, to that average. So again, this is the same thing in a kind of a discrete form. So this is the form that's actually going to be used. Uh, if we wish to simulate uh, something that approximates this kind of uh, distribution here. So again, this is a review. Uh, the authors want to find a way to determine what these parameters are um, from, a, from a series of data. So we're given a whole bunch of uh, X's or X sub I's, and we wish to find out what mu, theta, and uh, sigma are. So they use a maximum likelihood estimation uh, technique, and to simplify the math, they kind of define <clears throat> excuse me, they define these variables here. Again, we've covered this, so I'm just going to kind of breeze through that. And then they show that you can kind of get the optimal theta, mu, and sigma uh, via these relationships here. So I've taken code from the previous uh, video that does the uh, calculates the log likelihood given a set of parameters, um, theta, mu, and sigma, uh, your stock data here, and the time step t. And down here, I've implemented um, these formulas in code here. So we can kind of calculate this via a function. So you pass in your, your time series x and your time step delta t, and it returns these, these optimal, um, optimal parameters here. So in this video, we want to reproduce the calculation they do where they look at a specific uh, pairs trade. Uh, they look at two pairs trade in this chapter. Uh, GDX, uh, GLD versus GDX, and GLD versus SLV, so gold versus gold miners, and gold versus silver. So um, the X here is going to be the price of our pair, and that's just going to be equal to the number of shares alpha of stock 1, 
uh, minus, it's just, we were assuming long one, short uh, stock two. So alpha, we're long alpha shares of stock one, we're short beta shares of stock two. And then the price of the pair is just the sum, or well, difference in this case, of those two. So this is the X that we're gonna be plugging into these formulas up here. Um, this is just kind of notes from my, uh, my, my use in putting this all together because it's kind of uh, a, lot of, a lot of notation here. So um, if we come up uh, to this equation here, our goal is to find a number of shares alpha and number of shares beta, which kind of optimally uh, solve this problem. And the assumption again is that this, um, this X follows this um, ornstein ullenbeck process. So how do, they, uh, how do they do this? And for basically what they do is for each potential alpha and beta, they'll end up sweeping over a whole bunch of these numbers of uh, shares of stock one and stock two. And then they plot the likelihood or they extract the parameters, assuming again, Ornstein, Ullenbeck, and then they plot the likelihood uh, given a particular number of alpha and beta. And then they sweep over these parameters and find the alpha and beta that that produce a maximum. And for some reason in the book, they plot uh, plot things in dollar as amount. So if we had, um, so if at capital A were the dollar amount in stock S1 here, if we had alpha shares of that stock, the dollar amount would be obviously alpha times that stock. So um, we can also get alpha is equal to A over the stock price at time zero, likewise beta is equal to B, the dollar amount in stock B initially invested at time equal to zero. So uh, let's go on and look at uh, GDX and uh, uh, SLV. Oh, prior to that, I should say they fix the uh, value of A. So they assume for every $1 in stock one, they get an alpha and then they uh, sweep the ratio B over A. But since A is one, that ratio is basically just the stock, uh, the amount of money invested in stock number two, uh, B. But I'll do it explicitly just, um, just to be as clear as possible. So again, our pairs are GLD, uh, GDX, and GLD SLV. Uh, first of all, we'll look at uh, the, the gold, gold miners. They look at stocks from this range. So it's August, this is actually 2011, let me change that. So August of 2011 to May of 2012. Um, so they take n the number of data points in that set to be 200. There are actually a couple more days, um, depending on how you define from beginning of August to end of May, they're actually a little more, but we'll just take the first, uh, 200 for now. And then their time step Delta T is going to be one day. And since they take 252 trading days per year, Delta T expressed in years is going to be one divided by 252. So let's code this up and just pull in our data for GLD, uh, GDX, and um, yeah. So I've already downloaded the files into comma separated value uh, files from Yahoo Finance. Um, this is just reading in those files uh, via the pandas library. Uh, to, for ease of use, I just pull them out individually into their uh, NumPy vectors. So I'm going to adopt the convention that the capital letters refer to a pandas data frame and lowercase refers to, um, to uh, NumPy vectors. So we have our NumPy vectors. We take the first 200 of them. Uh, we set n equal to, it should be 200, so I'm just going to grab it directly from the length of this vector and dt. And let's just print out and just to be sure we're getting 200. So yeah, so okay, I've loaded those data and n does indeed equal 200. So let's just get rid of that and move forward. So next we're going to need our ratio of B over A uh, to sweep our parameters alpha and beta. And I'm going to sweep them, this is what the authors do in that book, from 0 0.001 all the way up to 1. And I'm just going to arbitrarily take a thousand points. It could be uh, whatever, whatever you want, but uh, the way I'm going to do this, a fairly dense number of points is probably preferable. And I'm going to do this in a kind of a computationally inefficient way. And I'm just going to, when I calculate the likelihood, I'm just going to append it to this list uh, here. So I'm going to define an empty list. Okay. So we're going to do this via a for loop. So for these, uh, for every value that's in this array here, we're going to calculate the likelihood, do a parameter extraction and calculate the likelihood given those parameters. Uh, so let's do the for loop. So for B 
over a um, actually for let's just say value in b over a oh, I'm very hoarse today the air quality in Southern California is pretty miserable at the moment um, where was it we need our alpha so alpha we could probably do this outside of the for loop, but I'll just do it in the for loop. That is equal to our dollar amount, which we said was one, over the initial price we paid for GLD. So that was GLD on day zero. So that looks good. Now we need beta, and that is going to be equal to, uh, beta is equal to our value divided by the price of GDX at time zero. So that's that. Again, remember A is equal to one here. Um, so now what do we need? We need to generate our pairs price and then uh, figure out the optimal parameters. So our pair price X again is just alpha times the price of gold uh, over time minus beta plus uh, times, excuse me, uh, GDX uh, over time. So now let's do our parameter extraction. So our parameters again are just calculated from this function, calculate parameters, which I copied in above from a previous video. We pass in our pairs price and our time step DT. And now we need to calculate the likelihood and append it to this uh, this array here. So um, let's go likelihood dot append and our log likelihood function. And we pass in our parameters, our uh, sequence of data and our uh, time step. So that should be it. So this is going to generate a bunch of likelihoods given a bunch of different ratios of alpha to beta. So let's just make sure this runs and there are no uh, typos here. Cool. Uh, now let's plot out this value uh, of likelihood over all of our uh, values of B. And since uh, since A is equal to one, I'm just going to use this. Uh, in fact, let me just say here, uh, because A is equal to one, B is equal to uh, B over A. Now we'll do a plt dot plot b comma our likelihood for uh, GLD GDX and let's make this a black line. Let us also just turn on a grid because I like the way the grid looks. Plt dot grid. Okay, so I found the issue. Um, I'm doing this in, in the same directory where I did the original pairs trade uh, video. So uh, I also use GDX and GLD. Uh, so our files are actually for this video should be GDX historical and, and GDL, GLD historical. So with uh, the correct data file, we get this curve here. So you can see it's kind of maximized here when B is roughly equal to 0.5. Let me put some uh, labels on these axes here. Okay, so we can see B is maximized about uh, 0.4. So the y-axis is the log likelihood. Um, this is our B, the value of um, our initial investment in stock B. So once you know B, you can calculate A and therefore alpha and beta. So let's just pull out um, what this maximum, what, what B gives you the maximum value from these data. And I'm just going to do this in a kind of a, a sloppy way here. I'm going to find the value. I'm going to call it a V. Uh, so MP dot A max. So it's going to be the maximum value of our uh, log likelihood. So log likelihood. Um, I'm sorry, the var variable was likelihood. Oh my God. GLD. Uh, and then we're going to find the index that corresponds to that. So I'm going to say IND is equal to mp.where. Uh, likelihood is equal to V. Uh, this is going to come back as an array. So I'm going to get the first uh, IND is equal to the first element of that array. Or actually it's a tuple, but I'm going to get the first element thereof. And I'm going to print out the B value at that index. So that should be our answer. And we get a value of 0 0.509. And we can see that that's visually roughly, uh, roughly correct. Now the authors in the book get a value of uh, not 0.509, they get a value of 0.454. Uh, uh, this is very sensitive to your input parameters. So as I said, these initial values, uh, initial number of data points, where's my import? Here we go. So if we don't go from uh, 0 to 200 and we go from, say, 3 to 203, remember our um, these data files contain more than 200 points, and we rerun all of this. 
we will get a slightly different number. So in this case, we get 0.499. So this is very sensitive, and that may explain the slight discrepancy between what I get and what the book, uh, the book gets. So I don't think I'm going to show the same calculation for SLV. I will put it in the notebook before I upload it, but it's just the same thing with a different uh, set of data files. So uh, I think we are done here. Cool. Uh, that's pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, so I don't really have much to say about this. So the next video in this series will be on um, the next section in the book, which is on uh, optimal stopping. Uh, basically, the authors want to consider, uh, can we choose our entry and exit times uh, in such a way that statistically at least optimizes our, our profits. So we'll look at that in a subsequent video. So um, until then, see you later.